Hi, I've clicked onto the tropical tip here for Monday evening, September 4th. As always, the thoughts expressed here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials. Well, before we talk about Irma, we do have a couple other regions to touch on. This is the tropical disturbance in the Bay of Campeche we mentioned yesterday. A little farther west, uh, still rotating, you can see here with some thunderstorms around it. A little bit of shear on its northern side, but it could develop into a tropical depression or storm over the next few days. The National Hurricane Center currently gives it a 50-50 shot of doing that over the next three to five days. And uh, the good news, at least for the United States, is that this is unlikely at this time to move all the way north and, and bring much rain to the northwestern Gulf, as the trough that's going to be coming down into the eastern U.S. that will interact with Irma will bring a northerly flow into this part of the country that will likely keep this disturbance penned up to the south of the North Gulf Coast. And so this is likely at this moment to meander for the next few days in the uh, southern Gulf and interact potentially with Mexico and bring concerns for heavy rains and gusty winds to portions of both the western and eastern Mexican coastlines as the system moves throughout that region over the next few days. We also have a system behind Irma, which could develop into a tropical storm or hurricane in its own right over the next few days as it moves toward the west-northwest, though it will likely be at least partially sheared by Irma's outflow impinging upon it from the northwest, which may limit its strength, uh, but we could see another storm moving into the region where, where Irma is right now in a few days, and uh, it could get close to the islands according to some forecasts, but we'll take one problem at a time here for the Lesser Antilles as the most imminent and uh, dangerous threat is from Irma herself. Currently coming in from about the due east, this is the close-up view showing a nearly due west motion throughout today, maybe slightly south of due west in the long term. Uh, but we're waiting now for this gradual turn to the west-northwest that is expected to occur near the northern leewards. And uh, at this point, we're just watching and waiting to see when that happens, because right now it's moving directly toward these northernmost islands. And the expectation is that will, this will be a very close call and a direct hit on some of these northernmost islands is very possible in the leeward islands sometime early on Wednesday. This is the recon data from the flights today indicating that the hurricane is much stronger than 24 hours ago. This is now a category 4 with winds of 130 miles per hour, pressures down in the mid 940s. It has been steady for the last few hours this afternoon and evening, likely because the system is undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle. You might catch hints on this loop of an inner eyewall fragment that is currently circled inside of a larger eye wall that is trying to become dominant and take over. What this usually means is that the hurricane will either cease to intensify or even weaken a little bit while that's occurring, but the wind field also expands and makes the storm bigger and thus more dangerous to a larger area while this is ongoing. And then when the eye wall replacement cycle completes and the outer eye wall becomes dominant, then unfortunately that usually means the hurricane will intensify again. And this may happen just before the hurricane uh, reaches the islands. The sidewall replacement cycle may complete, and unfortunately, we may have an even stronger storm than we have now when it's in this region. Uh, it's already dangerous and powerful enough, but it could acquire even a little more strength as it approaches the island chain. This is the water vapor imagery again showing the expansive outflow with the storm, very circular here, expansive uh, upper level cirrus expanding away from the storm, indicating a low shear environment. The mid-level shear that was hard to see for the last couple days is also abating now as it uh, moves toward the islands, and so the environment is becoming, unfortunately, rather ideal for this hurricane. The water is uh, warmed up to 29 degrees Celsius in this region now of the central Atlantic, and so the hurricane has warmer water and lower shear to work with than it had a couple of days ago, and unfortunately, again, this also supports further intensification and uh, it's already strong enough but it could get even stronger as it continues off to the west northwest here. This is the official NHC forecast track showing again this turn to the west northwest expected here but any delay in this turn could bring the the eye right over any of these islands here in the hurricane warning area uh, throughout the leeward islands and we have hurricane watches that extend all the way down to Guadalupe as well as any deviation to the south could bring the hurricane force winds a little bit farther south there and so there is a watch up tropical storm warnings and watches down to through Dominica as well. Uh, storm surge expected six to nine feet above normal levels in these islands. This is the most dangerous impact of hurricanes is the storm surge flooding. Don't get caught in it if you're in a flood prone area. In addition, flash flooding inland could occur due to mudslides along mountain slopes on these islands as heavy rain will extend over a large area. 
per, per usual. And then hurricane watches are up for the Puerto Rico, U.S. and British Virgin Islands as the system will be in that area by later on Wednesday. The, the islands occur early on Wednesday, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday. Later on Wednesday, it gets into Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands area. And again, a direct hit is possible here if the track shifts just a little bit to the south. This is not much here, so don't focus on the center of the track line here as uh, it shows a miss, but it could just as easily be a direct hit here. So we're going to be watching for that closely in the short-term trends over the next day or so. As we continue out in time, unfortunately, this track continues to shift a little bit farther south, and most forecasts now agree that this is going to be very close to or just north of the Greater Antilles. And so we're now looking at a direct threat to the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, Hispaniola, and Cuba. All of these could see a direct landfall potentially from Irma, and even without a direct landfall, this will cause lots of problems with the hurricane force wind field potentially growing over time over the next few days, encompassing several dozen miles worth of width, and even if the storm isn't uh, directly over Hispaniola and Cuba, of course, their biggest problem is flooding and flash flooding. Uh, due to the mountainous terrain here inducing very heavy rainfall even far from the hurricane and we could even see induced rainfall over Jamaica as well. So this is going to be a big problem for really this entire region over the next few days and this is unfortunately becoming more and more confident uh, in this region that the hurricane will be passing near or south of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos and uh, be prepared here for a direct hit. This is no this is no joke this hurricane. This is a bad one. Please be prepared and listen to your local officials uh, on what you need to do in order to keep yourself safe in this area. As we look further out now uh, we're, we're again asking the question in the United States, will it be coming after this area as well in the southeastern United States? And unfortunately, the odds have increased a bit for a landfall somewhere in the uh, longer range. This is, again, the NHC forecast out to early Saturday by day five. It has not reached the United States yet. And uh, we'll be looking at this pattern again for the steering of the hurricane. If we look at Saturday morning, this is where the European model has it, just off the north coast of Cuba. And in this situation, we continue to talk about the steering features like this upper level trough in New England, this ridge nosing in to the northeast of the hurricane, which pushes it west-northwest until this point. And you'll note that with the hurricane in this position, we have a ridge to its northwest, kind of over Texas, and then this nosing ridge to its east. So there's a break in the middle. And that break is over Florida. It doesn't mean it won't doesn't mean it will necessarily move over Florida, although it certainly could, but what it generally means is the hurricane is likely to make a turn to the north here. The, the hurricane moves west-northwest, and even though it's this far south, a sharp turn to the north, or even northeast, is likely in this kind of a pattern. Where exactly that turn occurs will determine who is threatened. At this point, if the hurricane is actually here near the Bahamas or just south of by the weekend, then we have a variety of scenarios that could occur. If this trough in New England is slower to move out or is dug in a little little farther down over the Carolinas, then this ridge will be rounded off a little farther east, allowing the hurricane to potentially turn east of Florida and then perhaps just out to sea over the western Atlantic, close to the eastern U.S., but not over it. That's a scenario that is very possible still. Unfortunately, this turn could also just as easily occur right over Florida and then bring the storm potentially north and up into many states in the eastern United States, perhaps from Florida all the way to the mid-Atlantic or New England, depending on how the steering works out. And this would be perhaps the worst case as it could bring adverse conditions all the way up this part of the country. And if you're asking if it could get into the Gulf of Mexico, the answer is it could. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to rule that out at this point. We could just see it move all the way west and uh, get into the Gulf, uh, but at this point we're talking about you know day five to day seven to day eight, and there's a lot of uncertainty here. And really, this whole region could see the hurricane somewhere in here uh, within the weekend and into next week. Again, a lot of features are hard to predict here. This trough is cut off; it's very difficult to model correctly. We have a ridge coming across from the north, and so by the time we get to day seven, this trough may move on. And the hurricane is turning north now into the steering weakness, but this ridge is quickly coming to the north and moving east, which could block the hurricane and just shunt it just inland into the eastern United States uh, and stop the turn out to sea. So there's a lot of uh, features at play, and there's a lot of uncertainty yet. We've been talking about the storm for days, and we still have a long way to go. The good news is that we're talking about uh, the weekend at the 
earliest that the system could be affecting the United States. It's going to be the weekend or later at this point. So the good news is you have time, but you should be getting ready as early as you can because of the rush that's likely to occur. And make sure you have a plan that's ready uh, in case the hurricane comes uh, your direction into your region. We can't narrow it down yet, and one of the reasons we can't is not only because this pattern is difficult to predict, but because the approach angle is very parallel to the United States coastline. If the hurricane is here, if we expect it to turn north somewhere, well guess what? A very small error in where that turn occurs, look at how many different places it can affect, anywhere from Florida to New England, just because of a very small shift from left or right and a small shift to the right could make it miss all of the United States. So there's a lot of uncertainty just because of the track angle as well. So this is very difficult to forecast, but the best course of action is just to be ready just in case. Again, we're still a minimum of five days away here from potential impacts for Florida, and we just don't know enough beyond that point about what's going to occur here. And again, a direct landfall in Hispaniola and Cuba is possible. And this is the other scenario, is that the hurricane could interact strongly with the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola and Cuba, and that could dramatically weaken the storm as well prior to its turn to the north. And depending on how far it's south it gets, whether or not it were to get into the Gulf of Mexico or turn north sooner, we just don't know here. There's several scenarios, as we just discussed. Uh, but the hurricane, unfortunately, if it doesn't interact with the mountainous terrain of Cuba and Hispaniola, is likely to remain highly strong over the next three to five days. This pattern that I showed you with the low wind shear, this just continues. And if we look at the GFS forecast, when the system is in the Bahamas, this is showing upper level flow and really just concentrate on this blue region, indicating the extent of the hurricane's outflow expanding away from it in all directions. This indicates a very healthy environment of low shear that persists until the hurricane is, is all the way over into the Bahamas and Florida region. And this unfortunately means that in combination with the warm water, there's really nothing to stop this hurricane from being strong except for the mountainous terrain of the Greater Antilles. That's the one thing at this point that could really weaken the storm. But barring that, this is a major, major problem for the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, and most imminently, the Leewards and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. You guys are getting it first, beginning as early as late Tuesday night and into Wednesday. And later Wednesday, it gets into the Puerto Rico Virgin Islands region. Make sure you're paying attention to all the information from your local officials from the National Hurricane Center and your local weather offices to keep yourself safe. Please be prepared when, if you're farther west in the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. This is coming your direction. There's more confidence now today in at least that part of the track, and this is likely to be a bad storm in this region. And again, flooding, huge concern for the Greater Antilles, for any hurricane that's nearby, even without a direct landfall. Beyond that, in the United States, as we just talked about, lots of questions fewer answers at this point. Unfortunately, the odds of a landfall are higher today than they have been in the last couple of days. The system could still escape to the east of the United States. That is still on the table, uh, but unfortunately, the odds of some sort of impact to the United States have increased over the last couple of days. So do get prepared. you still got time in the United States. You have less time if you're in the Bahamas uh, and the Turks and Caicos and the Greater Antilles. Uh, make sure you pay attention again to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information that's it for today. Thanks for watching.